Welcome, everybody, to the Be Kind Podcast, part of the Animal Advocates' mission for more compassionate world for all living creatures, whether or not they have United States passports, Mexican passports, a zip code in New York City, a zip code in York City. All animals deserve to be loved, and we're here to make that happen. And as a reminder, you can reach us at BeKindPodcast at gmail.com and find us wherever podcasts are sold, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google, and other random ones we pop in. And so like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and get the word out. I'm Joe, and I'm joined by John, and this week we are joined by Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Thank you guys for having me today. Hey. It's our pleasure, and we had a little time to get to know you before we pressed record, but could you just give our listeners a little background on you, your vegan journey, and what currently takes up most of your time and energy in your life? I don't like asking people what they do because then they tell me their job, and I think that's a really lame capitalistic way to ask people <laughs> things. So I like to ask what they, what really gets them fired up, and what they devote most of their passion to. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, so well, my full name is Roberto Carlos Perez, um, but all my friends call me Carlos. I've been vegan for eight years now. Um, my vegan journey started. Uh, I guess I was very hungry for knowledge during this time and i started like looking into a lot of documentaries i encountered one of these um documentaries where they talked about you know animal cruelty and also uh, different documentaries where they talked about how um the meat industry is kind of like they're paying for like the studies and so they can look good on paper Mm -hmm. you know and it was you know it was it was very mind open it was very uh, eye-opening and from then i just I, i wanted to look more into it and you know, that's how everything started. I had tried to leave meat twice before that, but they were for different reasons. It was just because I I heard that they had, like, uh, different kinds of hormones and stuff like that. So it was, I was in it for, like, definitely the wrong reasons as far as, you know, me personally. And I failed. I mean, a week later, you know, I went back to eating meat. But this time it was different because I was, I was scoping it through, like, a different... I guess kind of a point of view, and I've been I've been meatless for eight years now. <laughs> wow, that's awesome! So it sounds like you originally tried to go vegan or vegetarian for health, and then it didn't really stick. But then once you went vegetarian or vegan for ethical reasons, for the sake of the animals and things like that, it was much more sticky. Yes, that is correct, and and I'm glad you said you know you mentioned vegetarian and vegan because I actually did one year vegetarian because i didn't really it didn't really stick to me you know like that the dairy industry and all that good stuff and i was just eating pizza like every every day (laughs) but then i was you know the the more the more i kept digging into like information you know it just made sense to also ditch dairy because Mm -hmm. i mean if you're doing it for ethical reasons you know you, you might as well do the whole ten, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and it's funny, you know, I started off as a vegetarian too, and I I was vegetarian for years before I went vegan. I mean, and it took me twenty five years to get away from the dairy industry. And yeah, it it, it was hard because you know you you love pizza and stuff like that, like you know. So right. I, so I I'm I'm with you on that. It it it's a people have their own way of going about their own way of trans transitioning. So yeah, it's. It, it took you less time than it took me, that's for sure. <laughs> I just went yeah, well, straight from buffalo wings and steak to vegan. And oh, wow. I, didn't, I skipped the whole vegetarian thing. Oh, wow. And, and it's different for everyone, you know? It's going to be different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's no, like, one right way to do it. Right. So you were born in New York, but you traveled to Mexico quite frequently. Uh, what's it like down there as a vegan in, in Mexico? All right, so actually, you know, culturally, I, I want to say, like, when I came out as vegan with my whole family, mm-hmm. they really didn't understand what was going on because they're like, why, why, why you want to eat meat? Because every dish pretty much, you know, has meat. But um, in the same sense, every dish, you can just remove meat, you know, quickly and easily. And in Mexico, 
it is so easy to go vegan to be vegan um and, and i just don't say you know like because the, the kind of ingredients you have but also because it is actually so cheap mm-hmm. it is dirt cheap i remember this lady she would knock on our door and she was selling like um, a mixed bag of veggies right mm-hmm. and um in that this was like four years ago and she would sell it for 35 pesos uh, which kind of equates to like a uh, like a dollar and 75 cents oh wow and yeah and um i would make this this soup and it would probably serve like i don't know 10 12 servings mm-hmm. for dollar 75 wow that's pretty incredible <laughs> yeah. yeah and not only that like i remember like leaving my house and just like walking downtown mm-hmm. and one block away or two blocks away you would always find a fruit vendor and they would have like you know watermelon coconut mangoes everything fresh freshly wow. cut and it, it, it's so easy for real mm-hmm. over there you have rice you have beans you have um the tvp mm-hmm. which is very accessible to everyone and um in in mexico right now oh my god the the vegan revolution is off the hook right now oh yeah <laughs> yeah they have taco stands mm-hmm. and there <laughs> i was looking at this video in mexico city where this guy's like, hey, he, he he was eating some tacos, and he he went up to the um, <laughs> to the chef, and he's like, hey, can you put um, can you put more of the uh, like the grease, the greasy part, uh, I guess, of the animal? Mm-hmm. And he's like, dude, everything here is vegan. We, we, there's no animals. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was eating like meat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, like right now, Mexico is oh my god. The, the I've been I've been traveling there a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And oh, I am just baffled by all the options, the vegan options over there. That's awesome. That's so cool because I always wonder what it's like to be vegan in other places. We're all pretty good at being vegan within our own little cultures and societies. But it's so nice to hear that it's extending out towards other countries. And I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about rice and beans in Mexico. Because inevitably when someone says, I can't go vegan, it's too expensive the first thing that most vegan advocates say, well, rice and beans are super cheap and great. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they tell that to people where rice and beans aren't really part of their culture or a staple dish in their diet. So it's really saying, well, go out and completely change your culture and your family's traditions and dishes. Though it sounds like within your culture and your family, rice and beans are a staple or have been a more commonly used dish. How do you make rice and beans within your family? I, I do rice and beans in so many different manners. <laughs> um, it's not even funny. <laughs> you know, it goes from different kinds of beans to refried beans to whole beans. Even even within just beans, you can make like different dishes where we use we use this corn flour and we make like these little balls and and a lot of people don't even realize it, it's very like e- economical and cheap um, option in Mexico. Mm-hmm. They call them frijoles martajados, but it's vegan, and a lot of people don't even realize they're eating vegan, you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny. One of my friends, he was teasing once. He told me, dude, when I when I grew up, I was actually vegan for like 15, 20 years. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and he was just teasing, obviously. But he said, yeah, because we were so poor, and we would just eat rice, beans, and cactus. <laughs> <laughs> We have edible cactus in Mexico. Yeah, now. I actually had a cactus um, enchilada, I believe it was. My friend, our friend Catalina, who has a cupcake somewhere, made some for me, and I think you actually introduced me to her. Yeah, I love cactus, man. I mean, yeah, it's really good. How do you prepare yeah. cactus? Very carefully. <laughs> so first, you need to clean it up, right? You need to take all the thorns out. Then you can grill it. Just add some lime and salt. And it's pretty much it's it's like avocado where it doesn't really have a flavor. Yeah, it's, it's more texture. Yeah, it has you know? a, yeah, it's a really nice texture. It's good. It's a it's a little bit meaty, slimy. So, uh, at least for me, like the first time, I hated it. I tried it again, and then you know you you kind of just begin liking it, I guess. But <laughs> I, now now I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't know what she did to like doctor it up, but it was really good. I really liked it a lot. In Mexico, like, so far as, like, restaurants, are there straight-up 
vegan restaurants there or is it kind of just like you know how it is here where you know there's restaurants regular regular restaurants that just have vegan options or is there straight up vegan restaurants there so it's pretty much like here where um you know you have a lot of places that offer vegan Mm -hmm. options but they aren't um you know they're not 100 percent vegan but then again you also have that that uh, that other side where you're beginning to see like a lot of little businesses pop out which are 100 percent vegan or some of them actually might be vegetarian and vegan you know right there was this one restaurant i, I used to go to a lot and in in queretaro and you know they would they would do like vegetarian dishes but mm-hmm. also vegan and uh, you know i guess for them it made sense because if they wanted to like you know maintain their business or whatever mm-hmm. you know they, they would have to offer all the options they had some of the best vegan tacos there mm-hmm. and i would go there <laughs> like every day order like four orders of tacos for myself <laughs> yeah you're like a taco that's monster what, <laughs> yeah man, i'm the taco monster that's another thing like a lot of people think you're gonna like starve to death when i went all right when i went vegan mm-hmm. I actually started gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, and I love it, you know, like I love to eat and I love the fact that I don't look like I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> and the animals thank you for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if there's something that what can we do better within this country that we could really learn from from Mexico in terms of the vegan culture and making veganism more acceptable and more accessible and accepted? I would say maybe incorporate more more ingredients. In Mexico, we tend to use like whatever's on, in season, mm-hmm. and um, there's this uh, there's this little marketplace that I used to frequent as well, and they would use every kind of herb that they would find, and you know they would make like they they would fry them, they would bake them, anything. I think that's the most important thing, you know, just kind of opening up the array in your ingredient arsenal just not being shy about checking out different ingredients i guess because that's that's something that you see a lot in mexico Mm -hmm. where you you use different kinds of ingredients all year long we do not like to experiment with vegetables up here in the united states to be sure yeah absolutely we're very (laughs) set in our ways on what we (laughs) yeah because uh, one of the things like if if you if you ask Almost any kid here in the United States, what color is a carrot? They'll tell you orange. Right. And and we have so many different kinds of carrots, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually had purple carrots uh, over the summer, and they were so good. And I, yeah. I, I usually, like, if I'm making a soup or something, I obviously just boil them. It was kind of crazy because it turned my soup purple. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, cool. it was great. <laughs> Wait, you know what's a ripoff? Purple green beans. Because they start out purple, but then when you cook them, they turn green. Those jerks. <laughs> I've never heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, going back to that last question you also um, you, you asked me, mm-hmm. um, are they also using like diff- different kinds of seasonings, you know? I know like for vegans, once you go vegan, you start experimenting with more se- seasonings mm-hmm. um, that you probably didn't before. Yeah, absolutely. But then, um, but that that definitely also like the seasonings, you know, like don't be shy about it, you know. Try I don't even know how to pronounce this word. I don't know if it's cumin, cumin. Oh, cumin, cumin. yeah, cumin. <laughs> Turmeric, uh, whatever, even ginger, curry, anything, oh, yeah. you know. Definitely. Just, just be, be be very open about it. Yeah. Say I'm going to Mexico right now. Well, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> right, yeah, let's go right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I went to a restaurant how would I ask for something to be vegan? What What are some uh, Spanish words that I would use uh, that would help me get get through that <laughs> that process? So you want me to like say it in Spanish or yes, yeah. So like, say I wanted like vegan tacos. Yeah, like vegan tacos. How would I How would I go about that? I would probably the easiest way would say it would go something like this. Hola, mi amigo. Me puedes dar Tacos veganos, por favor. Si me das carne, me puedo morir. And that translates to, hello, my friends. I was looking for t- vegan tacos. If you give me meat, I can die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> that's one way to make sure they get the order right. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, well, you know what? It's kind of, it's like I'm half joking, half not. Oh, yeah? Because, yeah, because, well, here in the United States, I've worked in the uh, restaurant industry, mm-hmm. you know, as a waiter, server, even as a manager in different uh, restaurants. But it's, it kind of still baffles me that some people, including the people that are cooking, they don't understand sometimes what what it is you know that you're asking for when you're telling them that you want things to be vegan mm-hmm. you know they, they they don't they don't they don't make that connection sometimes some of them do some of them don't it's it's actually kind of funny you're saying that because there are times when i'll go to a restaurant like well back in the day when i used to go to restaurants and i wasn't really feeling the vibe that they w- would know what a vegan was i would just tell them i need no dairy because i am lactose intolerant so yeah. they they have to like sort of understand that to make that connection. So yeah, you're you right. Have to the card, like the allergy card and everything, and yep. it's unfortunate, you know, because you kind of uh, burn that, you know, you kind of burn it down. And for people that really are allergic, it has to be done because I like like you said, you know, you sometimes you kind of feed off their vibe, and they're like, you're like, is this person understanding what yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm really. Yeah. Whenever that happens, yeah. I always sit there thinking, "There's definitely gonna be chicken stock or fish sauce yeah. or something." Yeah. yeah. And and that's another thing, you know, like in Mexico, especially in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! I don't. Need, I, this is one of the things that I hated the most. That most of their sauces, they um, they actually incorporate chicken stock, which mm-hmm. is like, it's just an ingredient that they use uh, made from like, like a powder. You know, right. so it's not even. So, like, right, so they don't even realize that they're using chicken stock. They're just using it because it's yeah. right there and it's in a powder. Oof. Yeah, because my um, I had this girlfriend in Mexico. Her mom, you know, I told her my preference, you know, mm. of not eating animals. And um, she's like, that's cool. I'm going to make some chilaquiles, which is like soaked nachos and salsa. Mm. And she put this this thing, this product called North Suiza, which is like a... Uh, what, what, it has chicken stock, you know, oh, it's okay. powder. It's, and thankfully, my girlfriend back then, she caught on, you know, she was like, dude, did, did, she asked her, did you use North Season? And she's like, yes. And she was just like, oh, you know, but, <laughs> and a lot of people, a lot of people don't even realize that they're using products with meat. Right. But definitely, definitely, like, without joking, I would definitely tell them, you know, be very explicit. Tell them, hey, yo soy vegano which is I'm vegan. Mm-hmm. And if they don't understand that, say vegetariano, uh, soy vegetariano, cero queso, cero carne, you know, just be very explicit about things. Nowadays, I try not to like go to restaurants where they offer vegan options just because I'm, I'm kind of scared about the craft contamination. Right. right. There are some restaurants that I know that are pr- pretty good. Like here, like in Viet Thai, they, they, they understand that really well. Yes, they do. Um, yeah, well, Ahara now they understand it too, mm-hmm. but it was like, it was like a mess for me at, at first, you know, trying mm-hmm. to make them understand. And, and several other restaurants where you you know, like the owner talks about it or whatever, and you know that they, their kitchen understands it. Yeah, and but it's, it's a few spots only where I would actually go. Yeah, and one helpful tip I think you might have given it to me. I can't remember who gave it to me, but at Guadalajara. If you get the guacamole from scratch right there while they're like in front of you, it's vegan. But if you order it pre-made, it has milk in it. Yeah, it it can have. um, And this this is actually like a like a trade secret from a lot of uh, Mexican restaurants, Mm -hmm. like the Tex-Mex. They make their guacamole like in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And use like I don't know thirty, forty avocados, so they make a whole a big batch. It's fresh, but at the end of the day, you know, you know how avocado becomes if it starts getting dark. Right. Right. And for them to avoid that, they'll they'll add sour cream. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which how do you mess up avocado? You know, guacamole like that. Yeah. That's, apparently it's, it's evil. <laughs> apparently the thing it's a, it's a thing in Mexico too, in some different oh, states. Wow. I actually learned, but hmm. yeah, I would nowadays I would definitely stick to like um to the vegan spots in in Mexico. You know, where yeah. they understand, or just like fruit, like the fruit vendors. You know. Mm-hmm. We'll all become fruitarians. Eat nothing but fruit. <laughs> Yeah, at least for half a day, man. Can you find some? <laughs> Ooh, fruit taco sounds good. <laughs> Actually, does sound good. Oh, I want a fruit taco. <laughs> oh, you know, I pineapples on my tacos. Yeah, mangoes yeah. and stuff. Oh my god, yeah, mm. so good. I'm so, so I'm sorry. <laughs> 
So in the United <laughs> States, veganism and the vegan scene, for lack of a better word, has a very kind of stereotyped, hippy dippy, kind of high food <clears throat> and holier than thou perception of it, the community at large. People see vegans as preachy, uh, spending lots of money and hippies and all that. Is there that? What's the culture perception of veganism in Mexico like? You know, it's it's funny you ask you ask this, but it, it is pretty much similar. Some people have even coined this term in Mexico, which which call it uh, white white chickens. <laughs> white chickens. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's like when I guess when like the American culture is kind of invading uh, other cultures. Mm-hmm. No, oh, in, in this case, Mexican, you know, white chicken. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, uh, and this is, and, and it's funny because the people that would, would tend to use this would probably also be like, you know, people are considered kind of hippie-ish or um, hipsters, stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, it definitely does have that vibe, you know. Not not all of them, but I, w- I want to say like seventy percent, you know, and that's just like a number that I'm just kind of making up. But people do feed off of that vibe where it's like for people that either have money or that feel cool or that are like kind of hippish kind of stuff, you know. Mexico hasn't really made that connection mm-hmm. uh, in some parts, at least, you know, right. because most of these taco stands that, I, that I'm talking about, they're actually placed in locations where it's, it's, it's considered to be very, you know, like they're considered very hipsterish. Mm-hmm. So definitely, uh, it does give that vibe off. And is there anything you would recommend to mainstream "quote unquote" vegans as a way to be more inclusive and try and break down those barriers and perceptions so we can be a more diverse, inclusive movement that's not portrayed with that brush of bunch of hippie white people <laughs> who are super rich? I don't know if I could recommend something because honestly, we all deliver, or at least we all try to deliver our message in our own unique way you know Mm -hmm. and sometimes you know sometimes we do go a little bit overboard or some people may think it's overboard some some may not but you know at the end of the day this message is urgent and that's why sometimes we do come across as very passionate Mm -hmm. so you know some people are going to get very emotional trying to explain this to to some people i want to say we all have our own kind of activism you know some people go out there where there are signs, others cook for people and try to like make them understand that veganism is actually delicious. I guess we all have our own kind of our path or we really choose our kind of way to like, you know, project this message. It, it, I don't know if this is going to sound right, but I guess there's no really right or wrong way to convey that message. You mentioned a little bit about your background in the food industry, and you just talked about activism in your own way. As someone who works in the food industry, how does veganism play into your day-to-day life in your job? I imagine, I know you mentioned Guadalajara and Viet Thai. They both don't have all vegan options. So when you work in a kitchen, I'm assuming a lot of times you have to prepare non-vegan dishes. How do you navigate those situations, or what kind of conversations are you having with your team to really put forward that vegan message? That's an excellent question. I love it because, um, you know, some people will will swear that if you go to an establishment that makes money off of, um, you know, selling dead animals and and you're kind of like supporting it, you know, it makes you kind of a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, really, we what we really need to kind of look into is like, are we doing our most, you know, in trying to be vegan? And we can't we can't really be 100 percent vegan ever right at least not now maybe in 20 years maybe in 30 maybe in 100 but right now in this present moment we can't really be 100 percent vegan but working in the industry you know so you you, ca- you kind of have to balance that that decision where you're like well i have to pay bills you know and this is the only thing i can do right now yeah obviously it's a, it it can become very depressive you know you're you're, you're flying out the kitchen with a chicken fajita right and all that steam is coming into your face you uh. just it right right but that's but that's what's paying your bills yeah and um or also when 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 clients um they ask you hey what would you recommend and you're like um 
those these vegan tacos are awesome. Like, oh. <laughs> you know? And they're like, no, 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 I, I, no. You know, some 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 will take that recommendation. Some will, yeah. but some won't. And and they're like, is there anything else you can recommend? <laughs> and then I would just probably give them like the greasiest thing that can maybe give them a heart attack. Or <laughs> the rat poison empanada. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, it can be you know, it can be very frustrating. You definitely have a lot of uh, internal dialogues with yourself if you're doing the right thing, especially right. But um, because you do sometimes, I guess, feel kind of like a hypocrite, you know, either working at these establishments or kind of supporting these establishments which are in 100% vegan. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, you know, we're still driving cars. We're still using, you know, technology, which kind of entails, you know, what I'm what I'm going after, which is we can't really be 100 percent vegan right now. Yeah. But we're moving in that direction. And I think that's what's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Veganism means compassion for your animals, but also compassion for yourself. That's right. Oh, yes, absolutely. man. And I feel like I need to say that I do not condone feeding non-vegans rat poison that was a joke <laughs> yeah we're not really trying to kill people <laughs> well carlos we're coming up on half an hour and i always like to give our guests the chance for the last word any final words of wisdom or messages you'd like to put out there for our listeners before we sign off yeah most definitely so if you're starting into this journey in veganism i would always um I would actually never leave my home hungry, never. <laughs> um, I always um, carry some snacks because that's one of the easiest ways to kind of like lose lose yourself. You know, like if if you're starving yourself and you're you're driving through you know whatever town and you're you're really hungry, you know your odds of of failing increase because you see a lot of options that aren't vegan. So. That's one of the things that uh, I like to tell people, you know, never leave your house hungry or carry snacks with you. And also um, <laughs> learn how to cook. <laughs> yes. I kind of learned, I kind of liked cooking before I went vegan, but it wasn't like, uh, now I'm in love with cooking now. I love cooking. Yeah. It's, it's so. fun. It's funny you say that because, yeah, when I, before I went vegan, I hardly ever cooked for myself. Like I was eating garbage, like take out and stuff like that all the time and like i didn't really learn how to cook until i went vegan like and now i'm like almost a master chef <laughs> because of yeah. learning how to do all these things so yeah and I, you know and you're right man i've tried your food and it's amazing oh, i love you. your mac and cheese <laughs> thank I, you. love, I love all your food actually but, <laughs> but yeah it's that. amazing what you can do you know once you you kind of like put pressure on yourself yeah you know where you're well, I don't have these ingredients to cook with anymore, but that's fine. I have these. I have all of these now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and you just you, your your cooking skills are gonna become amazing Absolutely. if you just if you just try. It, yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the, the, my two messages. You know, never leave hung, a home hungry, and learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, those sound like oh, two great messages no. to me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, Carlos, it's been a pleasure, and you don't have to give out any contact info, but if anyone wants to reach out to you to find out some great places to stop in Mexico for some vegan grubs, is there a way they can do that? Yeah, I would say, I don't know what would be the easiest way. I guess just maybe they can message me on Facebook. <laughs> uh, or I don't know if I should put my, I mean, I don't care about putting my phone number out there. Should I put my phone number out there? Now nah, we'll just put your Facebook yeah. uh, info in the show notes, and they can get the whole of you that yeah. way or they could email us at be kind podcast at gmail.com we'd be more than happy to ask on your behalf yeah that's cool i'll give you my facebook or my instagram and they can reach me out they can reach out to me through any of those platforms sweet perfect well thank you again for being on and it's been a pleasure and thank you for listening out there all right thank you take care bye, bye. South Central Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. We're back for one final bonus question for anyone who listened after the closing outro. Carlos, what is better, guacamole or hummus? That's not even a question, man. 
you know, I I love 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 hummus, but <laughs> guacamole for real. For guacamole is for the win. Sorry, I haven't officially tallied up the votes yet, though. I feel like I'm in the vast minority here. <laughs> I'm in the minority? No, I am, because everyone likes guacamole better than hummus, apparently. <laughs> it's so good. Think, they're both really good, you know? But yeah. I don't know. If, they're, they're both kind of spreads, but at the same time, can you really compare them? I don't think it's like a fair comparison, you know? And that, just because every, you know, they're really good in their own in their own unique way yeah the thing is is like with hummus like it's so it's really diverse and you can do different things with it like it with with guacamole it's like it, there's some things you can do to alter it like you can add watermelon juice to it or like different things to like give it a little bit different flavor but guacamole is guacamole like you can't really do a whole lot more with it you know what i mean so like that's why it's like kind of like up there because it's so perfect that you can't really mess with it you know, that, yep. <laughs> I know what you're saying. And, 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 you know, one of the things that I did notice in Mexico, which they did differently. Well, this was at, at, a, at an airport, right? Mm-hmm. But um, instead of using fresh jalapenos, they um, they fried their jalapenos. And, oh, my God. That was really good guacamole and spicy. Oh, man, that sounds really good. Wow. Mm. I'm going to go get some more. <laughs> right Dude, I'll be over in like 20 minutes. <laughs> I'll just be here by myself with my giant container of hummus. <laughs> now, what are your thoughts on like dessert hummus? Have you tried like the chocolate hummus? Yes, they are okay. But again, it's one of, it's kind of like rhubarb pie if you ever had it. Yeah. Where if you really have to do all that to make it okay, you might as well just use something else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried the chocolate strawberry one from... Uh, from what? yeah i got it from uh, i think it was where did i get the from was it giant i don't know anyway i got this stuff and i was like oh you know like we've tried other i've had other desserts where there was like bean things in it so this shouldn't be too bad and i tried it and i was like oh yeah this isn't the best <laughs> thing in my mouth i've ever had i'm never i'm not gonna do that again <laughs> so yeah wow. But yeah, it, it, I'm with you on that, though, Carlos. I, I'm all about the guac. But I love both, don't get me wrong. But yeah. I, yeah, And you know what? I love both of them, but uh, if I had to choose, it would be guac. 